on top. Hey guys, how you all doing? Oh guys, um, are, we all, are we live, right? Yeah, it's already live. <laughs> it's, too late. it's too late, Saga, you can't bail. Let the watch party, mate. <laughs> right, oh, yeah, yeah. Boys, you guys, how are we um... doing? We are live. Yep, we are. We were definitely live. I think you can still start it, right? Um, you can still start it. Yep. So... Do you want to kick off? Yeah, I mean, where do we start? We just had a very, very, very powerful discussion on um, bullying, suicide, and, and, and that general general theme. And I think it was a tricky one because obviously bullying alone isn't necessarily a source of what could lead to suicide, but actually seeing what, what are some of the conscious, non-conscious behaviors that happen that could lead someone down that path especially now as we're almost well certainly in the UK we're, we're back in lockdown and this sort of social distancing isolation comes in but there's still very much a, an online factor as well but I think in general we we really explore the various different impacts of how subtle and not so subtle overt and not, and not so overt bullying can have on people and actually sometimes you may not even be aware that you, you could be actively doing that or unconsciously doing that yourself too. Definitely, definitely. So many angles. Um, yeah, and such a difficult but real, raw, um, required subject to discuss and um, certainly bring awareness to it. And um, um, I'm not sure, I, I couldn't count, I think we had about 18 or 19 um, men in our session, our private session, um, literally just um, just finished, I think, five, five, five minutes ago. And there was... We started off, didn't we, um, in one place, and like always, we 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 went deeper and deeper and deeper, and and and, and I guess delayed and discovered that there's many different dimensions um, to this topic, um, because bullying to you and to me, um, or saga or or anyone who's listening to this is a different connotation to what that actually means, right? Because based on your life experience, whether that's verbal bullying, whether that's physical bullying. Um, or whether that's the you bullying yourself, uh, and what I mean by that um, is 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 just that inner voice, right? That that you keep listening to, etc. And then you're right, bullying in a lot of cases is linked to suicide, but in a lot of cases, it's nothing. It, it it's completely separate, right? Um, so we discussed um, the aspects around you could be having a perfect family, perfect. Uh, I mean forget the word perfect, but you know what I mean? You could be having your version of um, good um, in terms of a good marriage, um, a good job, a good business, et cetera. And um, one of the men commented that sometimes an unexpected term, um, we use the word jolt, um, uh, jolt because it's something that you didn't see. It, it, it's something that almost like um, uh, disrupts the status quo. And that could be a life-changing event, right? It could be a loss of a loved one, it could be in the example, um, I'm not going to go too much into it because it was personal, but it could be an example of um, a child with uh, autism um, and, and how that would affect you um, as an apparent, etc. Or it could be, uh, I think another example of um, was where a female walks out on you and on, on, on your relationship. It could be a male walks out in relationship with both sides. So it's so many different degrees and dimensions of what bullying and suicide mean first of all the definition of bullying um i mean no one needs to obviously everyone knows what you know the, the, the suicide means but i think there's different aspects that take you through that journey and, and and some of the things that we discovered was really interesting is that um what are the emotions that you go through what is the environment um and and by the environment i'm talking about your mind environment and your physical environment and what are the contributing variables that that i guess all come together and allow somebody um, to come to a decision or, or, or certainly have a thought of being suicidal based on being bullied, right? I think that was the topic where we leaned to more. So I think the focus of this conversation is 
what are the different types of bullying that you have or haven't experienced and, and, and or your loved ones that you've seen or you've been an observer, certainly. And um, one of the men mentioned that um, a couple of men that they haven't experienced it physically themselves and certainly didn't have any suicidal thoughts, but they've definitely had friends and family who have committed suicide. Um, and one or two examples were derived from being directly actually bullied. Um, so, so, so there was so much, I mean, to unravel. I think there's quite a lot to unravel. And then you can bully, and there's bullying through silence, right? So, so you can be passive bully, you can be an active bully. So it's, the, yeah, I mean, there's so much I can, we, we can all cover off. Um, absolutely. Sagar, did you want to have anything um, in terms of, um, to, to comment on in terms of, I guess, I'm not sure personally if you've, uh, if it's something you want to share or if you've had friends or loved ones who, who, who they've been bullied and, 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 and maybe you've been part of that journey, whether it's just listening or being on a sounding board, I think it'd be nice to just hear. Yes, um, it's really weird. I think one of the, uh, I don't know who mentioned it on the actual uh, Zoom call, but um, I think it was uh, Nims, I think, when he said, or oh, it was one of them, um, hey, sorry, um, he said um, that what's the difference? Like, where do you draw the line between banter and bullying? And it's so right because how do you differentiate that? Because, you know, someone else, you may think you're getting bullied. However, on their side of things, they might just think it's just banter. Um, and I, I think we I see quite a lot of that right because i remember you know in school um and i used to always say and, and this is a very personal story uh, i used to always say um to my brothers that you know uh, these guys are my mates and he goes yeah but mates oh it, this is so it's such a small thing right but he goes i was literally walking down the road came across my schoolmates uh while i was getting on the bus they took my Oyster card and then you walked to South Hyrule and they got on the bus with my Oyster. And I thought that was, you know, bullying because they used to do that quite a bit. However, for them, there must have been banter because when I walked to South Hyrule, they literally gave me the Oyster card back. <laughs> but I was like, how rude is that? <laughs> um, and so, and my brothers were like, they're not your mates. And I'm like, but they are, because they mates don't do that. I'm like, well, Again, that's was that banter or was that bullying? And I think you see that quite a bit nowadays. Um, and if you if you've got a closed mindset and you may not think of it like as banter, then it can lead to the next part, which is if someone keeps getting bullied, how much can you take? And I think someone mentioned it on the call is what leads you to suicide. Right? There's so many, sometimes it's that thing where because you don't understand what other, someone else is thinking when they're saying something and you've got your own perception of how you perceive that information, that can also lead to suicide. Um, it's a really, I don't know, it's a, it's a tricky one. And I, I was speaking to, you know, Bora yesterday when we, me and Bora spoke last night that I knew that this was going to be a Topic. I mean, I think the most amount of people we had was today uh, on, on Zoom um, and so many new people, right? Um, so glad that hopefully they've taken something away from our um, uh, from our first call. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, what do you think, Ronald? I mean, I think today was... Steph yeah, Stephanie, I mean, just, just back to your first point, I think there's, there's, there's varying degrees of acceptance between what is the fine line between banter and what is actually bullying, right? I think, you know, and one of the, um, one of the men mentioned um, a few comedians, uh, I can't remember who they mentioned to be fair, but um, they said that there's really, really borderline controversial, but, but it's kind of like dead on the middle, right? Is it, whether it's acceptable or not. Um, but it's also down to what you deem as acceptable, right? Because everyone's got a different sense of humor and everyone's got a different sense of tolerance levels, right? But there's outright discriminative bullying, which is unacceptable, where you're targeting hate to someone intentional um, because they're disabled, for example, or, or whatever the dis disability they have. That That's just not unacceptable in any terms, right? So I think we have to separate the two. Um, um, yeah. yeah. These boundaries are always going to be crossed. 
And I think for the person that's had their boundary crossed, the key is to be able to say, okay, you know what, you've crossed the line here. Because sometimes someone, if we look at banter, for example, right? I, I think banter is always coming, from, genuinely coming from a place of just kind of wanting to put people at ease and having a bit of fun. I think there's always a subconscious positive intention, unless it's specifically targeted. So when you're in a situation where you're bantering and one person is feeling the effect of the banter, you've got to communicate that and say, you know what, this, this is going a little bit too far here. It's just to reestablish that boundary. Because otherwise, and one of the examples that we shared in the call is sometimes you can indirectly attract it back by, in, by, not, by not saying it, by not pushing back. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with pushing back. It doesn't make you the bad person. That's an interest. That's an interesting point that you made because to link, I, I can't get this example out of my head. Segregate because if that happened to me, I'm telling you, it'd be a very different conversation with what so-called friends that, who take my oyster card and make me walk it all the way to South Harrow and then give it back to me. Um, that's just an extended form of bullying, mate. But sorry, <laughs> but no. But uh, do you know what? It's really, really, really important what you're what you've just touched on um, as well, Viraj. Right? It's because and we talked about sporting examples, right? Where footballers have actually um, um, used their personalities and their gravitas to, um, well, I, I think, I think it's personal to everyone. I think it's personally great. Um, them creating a stance, it's happened in American football, it's happened in basketball, it's happened in premiership football, where they will not tolerate it. They will just walk off the pitch. And, and, and as a spectator, you might think, what are you doing? Like, what's going on? Like, I want to watch a football match. But actually the greater the cause and effect is raising awareness and, and standing up right to, to your point Raj, and saying this is not right this is not acceptable and there was another example where you know um obviously not going to mention in any of the names but um because it was a personal story where they were talking about their family and being bullied by the dad because it was almost like the dad wasn't aware that they were bullying because the dad was suppressing um, the son's ideas or the inability to think creatively and, and diminishing every single thing, right? It's almost like what exactly was being said. It was the dad's own conditioning was, speak, was speaking of you can't do this because yeah. they can do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But but that's that's there's so many depths and dimensions to mm -hmm. that because I don't want to focus too much on that. But yeah, but there's there's so many different depths and dimensions to it because how, like if you said to me, um, 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 I don't know, let's say we're all going out and, and we know each other for the last 10 years, it's not, but we feel like we know each other for the last 10 years, right? And then all of a sudden, um, Manoj is not welcomed um, and you guys carry on as normal, do I then deem that as bullying? That That's my perception, right? That there's different layers is what I'm saying, yeah? To what is bullying through silence. So we talked about corporates, um, corporate le leadership, people in power, where they exclude um, certain individuals and not recognizing them, et cetera. Um, I've certainly experienced it um, uh, once uh, in my 17 years in corporate. And it's, it's, I'm telling you, it's not a nice feeling at all um, in any way, shape or form. Um, and I think there's, so you've got bullying through silence, exclusion. You've got passive bullying, right? And various degrees of it. And then you've got just straight up hatred, right? Like, like, um race uh, bullying um bullying through um um the opposite sex uh for example whether it's male to, to female female to male then you've got bullying in cultures bullying in communities um bullying in relationships and marriages it's it exists everywhere right so like where do you go with it it's it's all there's so much of it going on and i think all all, all we were trying to do in our humble attempt is like we always do every two weeks is just to create a space and talk about one of these topics and then this is just another one of the topics that we talk about and there were a lot of men like <laughs> a lot of men listening and a lot of men actively contributing and a lot of men who actually have experienced bullying and then there were a few of us who've actually experienced suicidal thoughts and then there was even few of us uh, um, or maybe more because maybe they didn't want to share about it who actually went down that road of trying to commit suicide, right? And then we discussed about the environment and, and, and the makeup and the mindset and what were all the contributing factors that would lead someone to even contemplate something like that, right? And it's different. There's, there's no like binary or linear, linear answer to that. 
it's 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 a, whatever jolt in your life um, that happens, um, you might handle it well. And jolt the same jolt in my life, it might crumble me, right? So it, it's not a like for like scenario, um, and and it could be subconscious buildup of something that's not being processed, or it could be something as conscious as I think certainly yeah, it definitely happened to me when I was about fifteen. I got mugged right at 15 years old and, and the guy stole my dad's uh, favorite ring now i could have kicked the you know what out of the guy um but there was the, the another guy came and then there was another guy with a dog and then i started thinking okay man i just think you, this is a bit too much now what's going on there right um and that that psychologically scarred me for a long 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 period of my life um and those of those people out there who know me know for a fact that I've never got mugged ever again in my life. Um, but then that's also a dangerous thing because I, I go aggressive, right, to anyone approaching me. So that that and, and if it's not handled, you know, effectively, then um, it can be a dangerous thing. So I think it's there's so much we can unravel. I think yeah, yeah, there's so much you can we can unravel on this. I just want to address a few comments in the chat as well. Mansatar, uh, thank you for sharing this as well. Hey guys, important topic. Gumbigar, thank you for sharing too. Um, here from Ravi Rara, uh, to totally agree, there's, there's a fine line between banter and bullying. I feel often, especially within groups of males, it can, oh, where'd it go? It can sometimes get very out of hand and it crosses the line and gets personal. Um, but everybody has different boundaries, so you've just got to be aware of that. And coming here from Reno, it's true, it's a very fine line between banter and bullying and every individual has their own tolerance. Always be mindful of others. Great discussion. Thanks for building the awareness. Thank you, Reno, for that. And and I think this is this poses a great question is, how can you be mindful of others when you just don't know where you can go with others? So as much as when you're at the effect, let's say, of, of what's going on, I think there's two things at play. It's the significance that you're, let's say it's verbal bullying or, or verbal banter or whatever. There's a significance in the meaning that you add to what someone says and where that takes you to rather than what's going on right now. So we talk about like the triggers and stuff like that. But then also, how much of that is almost maybe a lack of self-awareness of where your own boundaries are in terms of how much you tolerate as well. So there are two different things there. And I think and I think generally we all agree that when someone is, let's say, verbally bullying you, it's coming from their own place of, say, prejudice or lack of self-awareness, maybe they're even their own insecurities as well. And you rightly or wrongly are at the effect of that. Now, in that moment, I strongly believe we have a choice in how we react to it. And I think initially, we've got to figure out what's the lesson we're trying to learn here. That what's the lesson here that's available. So how, I mean, I know I've got my own way, but what, what would you say is the best way to begin to be able to choose how you react in a situation where you are being bullied so that you're not suppressing the pain, the emotion, the trauma, yeah which can manifest into this ease in your body, in your mind, worst case scenario leads you towards taking your own life? I think it's a great, um, it's a great opening question. I think it's going to be personal to everyone. I can certainly answer it from my perspective and, and what I've been through in my life is um, you have a choice, right? You have a choice to um, whether you, um, by the way, let me just put this caveat out because I did mention it previously. You don't always have a choice because uh, let, let's just um, assume we're talking about adults, right? Because because a child's perspective is very different to what they go through in, in terms of bullying and, and, and young, really, really young and, and sort of innocent age. And you're not going to be able to understand or process or, 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 or be aware of that. Yeah, exactly. So let's use it in the context of adults for now. So I think, and, and you're right, you do have a choice. Um, I think whether it's in a relationship if you're getting bullied you have a choice to stand up to it you have a choice to contest it to 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 process it to talk through it and if that's not working then to leave uh, in the corporate world you you definitely have a choice right and no job is worth being bullied right um, and through and etc and I mean it's easier said than done when you've got to put food on the table and you know when you're not earning and especially in the current lockdown and the highest unemployment rate at the moment now it's like, where, what level of tolerance do I accept? And, and the amount of conversations I've had personally with loads of people said, Manoj, this guy's been bullying me or she's been bullying me, or is this even bullying? Because they've just been conditioned to it for so long that they're questioning whether it's actually bullying or not. 
So it, it does come down to having an awareness, I think, a, a personal awareness and a distinction of what your personal definition is. Um, and I think it's important to define what you define as bullying. And then will you define what is banter? Because I've been with a, a bunch of guys, don't worry guys, I'm gonna mention your names, right? I don't do that. But where they, they, they're definitely bullying, right? And whether that's, you know, um, whatever circumstance, whether it's in a pub or not in a pub or of a football match, there's definitely, it's, it's, it's bullying. Trust me, it's straight out bullying, right? But then because you're amongst these guys, you feel uncomfortable raising it as bullying because then you'll hear terms of saying i oh, just man up like you know just man up what's wrong with you like you're a softie right then you think okay do i withdraw even more or do i speak out or are they gonna or i'm, or I'm just gonna get picked on right so i mean it, it, look, i speak my mind i'm not talking about me but um everyone's different right and some people might not feel comfortable um speaking their mind so i think there's a big distinction between what is banter um, and, and, and whether it's amongst females or males or males or females, there definitely is a big distinction between what is banter and what is not. And for me, that definition is that if you're doing it with malice to, to actually hurt someone consistently and, and, and I guess um, penetrate their confidence or whatever it is and, and belittle their character, it's not banter, right? It's bullying. It's straight bullying, right? Um, I can't dictate how much tolerance you have, but I can dictate whether I do something about it and whether that's me um, challenging it. I think to your point, Viraj, I think when do you kind of draw the line? It's different for each each individual. So, but what's not acceptable is not doing something about it because the topic of this conversation and the reason why we inter intersected the two words is if you don't do something about it, that does turn to personal trauma, right? That That's basically not being processed and that then leads to not having any escape or any way out. And that can be linked, not always, by the way, but it can be linked to suicide. So it's, it's a dangerous, it's a dangerous toxic concoction of different moving parts and variables and your mindset, your tolerance level, the environment around you, your social conditioning, uh, your friend circle. I mean, like your, and, and you should question it, right? Like, are the friends that I have the right friends? Is my support system the right support system, right? Be it family or friends, because somebody who has been bullied, the last thing they want to do is you telling them what they should or shouldn't do, because that's a, that's coming from a place of judgment, right? Um, I think the best thing sometimes in my case is that when I've reached out to certain people as well, it's like just being a sounding board um, and then just being them them just being there for you is what I'm trying to say. So I think it really depends, Raj. We can go, I mean, we can go so deep into this, but it really depends. You've opened it up now, so. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I just want to take a couple of comments here in the chat as well. And guys, thank you so, thank you to all of you that are joining us live as well. Um, Alex's comment here, Viraj, you made a great point about knowing what the truth is, or at least not attaching what the perpetrator may be trying to direct you as the truth towards you. Am I accepting this as the truth? Is there any evidence to back this up? Is it a story I want to believe? Mm -hmm. And here from Borga, um, treat others like you treat others like yourself, like you like to be treated yourself. Um, your heart knows humankind needs to change to kind humans. I want to pick up on that point in a second. And another um, comment here from Alex as well is uh, Katie Byron. So Byron Katie alludes this to her work in where she has four point framework to point things out. Is it true? Can you absolutely know it's true? How do you react when what happens when you believe that it's to be true? Who who would you be without that thought? Maybe slightly off topic and more to do with how you react to bullying, but I think that's that's a great point. And it's, it's almost what Dr. Daniel Amen talks about the automatic negative thoughts as well, in terms of how we're choosing, potentially how we're unconsciously choosing to react to something rather than bringing that into our sphere mm -hmm. of awareness and influence to then be able to choose, okay, how are we going to react next? And don't yeah, it's like how much energy, how much energy to yeah. Alex's both points, how much energy do you choose to give to that situation? Because you can like um, like a small little uh, uh, spark, you, you can ignite that flame even more, right? Because if you choose to give it um, the energy, that's not healthy energy. So by that, I mean, um, um, you can be drawn into something um, unnecessarily 
um and that is a choice and sometimes you don't have a choice right it, it's different and i can't remember who made the second comment because i can't see the comments on my screen um but it, it was a nice uh, can you read the comment again please yeah from from Bulga. um treat others like yourself to be treated your heart knows humankind needs to change the kind humans so yeah um, on that point i think this is something we spoke about because that you people don't change because you want them to and sometimes the circumstances that you will encounter aren't within your control. And that's where it comes down to how do you choose to react? Do you, do you elevate? Do you push back? Which I think to a certain extent, there has to be a healthy amount of pushback when we talk about establishing boundaries and, and what's not working for you just so you stay within your own personal integrity. But then yes, it's about coming from a place which I think is probably the toughest place to come from, irrespective of what's going on, to come from a place of love and compassion. Because kindness kills when you think about it. Mm. Right? It's, it's an, yeah, it's, it's, it's the most difficult place to come from, but it's the most rewarding place. And, and I think it takes a level of uh, emotional intelligence, um, a basic, um, um, well, sorry, just 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 an awareness in terms of your own intelligence and then in the level of emotion intelligence and then you've got um then you touch on your core values right who are you as a human being um, um to, to the point made and um, what does your core values represent and 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 back to what you said is you know um, kill them with kindness and and and, and i guess focusing on compassion so somebody so, so let's let's expand on that so someone's done me harm or someone's done you harm someone's done saga harm um and it's psychologically damaging whatever that is let's not go into um, any specific examples um and do you choose to react to it in retaliation or do you choose to react to it with compassion um and it's two different outputs right completely two different results that you're going to get from obviously the both and you could say that dealing it, dealing with it, retaliation is only going to add fuel to fire, da 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 da, and and and, and kind of um, we probably all be in there in one shape or form that we've thought about that. But definitely dealing with it with compassion is where the growth starts, right? Because then you're not subjecting yourself and lowering your frequency to that person's energy. So that's a whole new dimension of thinking and mindset. So I'm with them. Um, I can't remember the name person who mentioned it. Is it Paul? Uh, Boga. Volga, yeah, but I'm, I'm with Volga, yeah, definitely treat people as if how you want to be treated yourself. It's not always um, as easy as that, but at the same time, don't take crap, right? <laughs> like, like speak up for yourself, um, speak up for others around you and be that voice, if not for you, for others, right? Mm -hmm. You do get bullied because you have that, you've been empowered with a voice. How you choose to use that voice is up to you. There's a really great example right now that I think we're all seeing all over the news and I want to get your guys take on what I'm about to say. So obviously we're seeing what's happening with the US elections right now and on one hand you have Donald Trump that's... You're not talking politics are you bro? You're going to lose me if you loosely, talk politics. Loosely, loosely, loosely. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, and, and this is where I'm, I'm way out for the punchline because this is going to be good. Um, so on the one hand you've got Donald Trump who He's saying all these things, saying everything's wrong, da, 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 but he's been very aggressive in, in his own position with what the communication that he puts out towards other people. On one hand, you have um, the other party that are kind of not really talking about him, but are just focusing on, let's do this right, let's do this properly, let's da, 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 do things by the book as it's meant to be, right? So you've got two contrasting things here. And what you're seeing on social media is a lot of people pointing the finger back at Trump. Now, is an eye for an eye making the world blind here? So let me process that. So what are you saying? So are you saying, what is, what is the truth in that? Um, and what do we see? Or are you saying? So let me break this down again. Yeah, so yeah. You've, got, you've got the two sides, right? You've got for the last four years, Donald Trump has said some pretty inflammatory things. And on the other, and right now, even as the election's unfolding, there's a lot of people that are now reveling in his misery. Is that okay. right? Because look, if you just go on his Twitter feed and see the way people are responding back to him, is that an eye for an eye going on? 
and how is that serving anyone? Yeah, yeah, I can see what you, I can see what you're saying. You, you, okay, okay. So, so is it acceptable? I guess it's what's your version of acceptable, right? So, is there any, is there any malice or any intentional harm being done to that individual? Um, again, it's the same principles. And if there is an intentional harm being done um, through passive or active bull, uh, um, um, sort of bullying, then it's bullying, right? But that's, I think that's a milder probably example of something that's going on. But I think what you're, I, I get what you're saying. I told you you're going to lose me with politics. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's, let's think of it this way. And, and there's a great comment here from Mansata. This is, this one is an extreme. He's not just said he's done. True. But if you look at the things that he's done, isn't that the symptom of something else that's going on behind the scenes for him in that he's being and acting in this way? And yes, we can definitely argue and make the point that there are certain things that we don't agree with. We don't, the majority of people just don't think that that's, that that's right. But also, kill him with kindness, right? Yeah, but I think you can apply that to any, anyone, right? There's, I don't mean there's... in that sense, but like, just look at the look at the position that he's in right now, and look at the stuff that's been fired back at him. Yeah, I think the essence of that, uh, Viraj, is that you're always going to get people who don't agree with your opinion oh. in life, and it's it's down to each individual, right? Whether you um, OPO, right? I always say that uh, whether mm. you listen to other people's um, um, opinion um, and how you filter that that noise right um, and then and the other side of it what you're alluding to is how you react to that noise whether it's through social media or whether it's through a portrayal of whatever medium so I think it, it you look you're never going to get everyone to like you um, you're always going to get people who don't agree with you it just for me personally it comes down to where do you want to spend uh, the two most expensive things in this world, which is time and energy, right? So choose how you spend those things really, really, really wisely. Um, I, I, I got, for example, right, I'm, I'm usually quite active, right, on social media. Um, I've had some loving comments, right, saying, where are you? But it's not as in, where are you, as in, you need to post. It's, oh, are you okay? But they're linking, are you okay with, I'm not being active on social media. Whereas I've taken a personal reflection thinking I've been way too much active on social media. And I just want to dial back a little bit, which is why I've exited a lot of WhatsApp groups and some that you guys belong to, you know, and, and no offense to anyone. It's just, I'm choosing really wisely where I spend my time and, um, and energy. And, and two weeks ago, we talked about time bullies and that made me reflect, right? Um, that am I bullying? my own time does, does that make sense so then that made that triggered me to actually take that action i mean i'm going slightly off topic there but no, no, I'm, I'm glad you've linked that because i, I just want to uh, back in what i just said there because again we talked about social media and the cyber element of it and and not condoning anything that's happened and you know this is someone that's been in a, in a position of power that has been able to do something and people both ends of the extreme are either right behind him and they're not but I also feel that two wrongs don't necessarily make a right either in that sense. I don't know, it, it's, it's an interesting discussion, right, on, on that topic. But yeah, you're right. In terms of social media, in terms of the way people react in this cancel culture and everything that's going on right now, we talked about the example um, of Katie Price's son being bullied online. He's someone that has disabilities, has been, you know, unfortunately he's been portrayed in a certain way. And yet a lot of people are justifying that because of Katie Price and her background and all that stuff. So again, it's like, why, why should that even on that side of things, how does that come in in terms of the conversation we had was that people shouldn't put themselves in that situation, but good people all, good people also on social media get a lot of stick back too. So is there now another sort of dynamic to this where how we're reacting to people in person and also online virtually is also having an impact, particularly now that we're back in, you know, certainly in the UK, we're, in, we're back in lockdown, but with social physical distancing outside. There's now this whole new world of this virtual bullying that goes on, which has led to people taking their lives too. Yeah. I mean, okay, so let's break that down. So the KT Price example, uh, where irrespective of what you think about her 
Um, and then what's happening? I mean, I haven't been following it because I'm not really um, active on on, <laughs> on Twitter, um, especially. But um, what's been happening? And the person on the receiving end has been um, a son who's uh, autistic, right? Um, who, who's a, and, and 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 the I guess the debate or the argument or the question uh, or the narrative is that is that acceptable? Um, in my opinion, 100% no, because it's targeted bullying. It's, it's, la it's laser focused um, 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 hate, right? It, it, it's, it's belittling someone irrespective of the attachment or, or, or who, who's, who's that person's mother, right? I, I think that's kind of like neither here or there. Um, the fact that that person's being subjective to, to, to bullying is completely unacceptable, mm. I think another guy um, another male talked about he's completely petrified of his kids going on social media because he might not even be able to spot if there is bullying right um whether it's who god knows can't keep up nowadays right but what is it tiktok and all these things coming out now it's like um i can't keep up with it but but then the case is it's like do you then suppress them and create a bubble around them and, and that i'm not going to get into parenting but that's a whole new different topic right that's a personal choice right because you can never um uh, put a bandage around them and suppress them to everything that goes out in there because they'll just they'll just go and do it anyway but you can definitely put safeguards in place um and ensure that some of this doesn't exist but you're never going to really know right unless you're going through your your um child's phone um and exactly is going through every single message whether it's bullying or not and they might not be, be picking up on what's bullying right and especially with online gaming right now where everyone's just got headsets and you just don't know what they're doing because they're just talking to their friends i think i think there's there's look bullying is bullying whether it's virtual bullying whether it's you know it's physical bullying there's different levels of pain experienced i think with different things um, um but i think at the end of the day look, bullying is bullying and it's not accepted and i think where it's amplified and where it's completely not accepted and where it just really really um disturbs us right as mindful uh, the guys behind mindful men's club is that where it's contributing to unnecessary loss of life. I think that's the big picture, right? That, that's what we're trying to articulate. Whereas it's just not right on, on any level. A very um, diminished quality of life that someone ends up leading as well. Sorry, say that again? A very diminished quality of life that someone can end up leading. Yeah, actually, yeah. And that's a really interesting point. It doesn't always have to be the extremity of a loss of life. It could be the inability to live the life that you have based on your confidence, your, your being taken away from you, stripped away from you, your, um, your sense of self-value being you know, taken away from you and your friend circle, let's just say, have, you know, like whatever it is, right? You could actually still be living, um, but not be living by, not, not in a humane way anyway, I would say, like, because you don't really know what's going on in someone's mind, right? Unless you really, really, one, if you've got the courage to ask them in a genuine way, um, and it's not easy. Two, if they've got the courage to listen and respond and, and trust you, and then you start to form this real, honest, authentic conversation. And, 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 and even then you're, you're picking at layers, right? No one ever just opens up outright. Like there's always something that people hold back yeah. Right. Because you just never know who who's going to do what with the information you share with them. All right. We've, we've had, you know, talks where men have said they've shared certain things in private with individuals, both male and female, and they've turned it and used it to, you know, to, to, to hurt them. So it, it, it's trust is a big thing nowadays. Right. It's a massive so, thing. Yeah. Yeah, so go ahead. Yeah, no, there is. I just there's a few messages that have come through. Actually, I've, I've got someone who messaged on WhatsApp. Uh, so the first one was um, suicide on suicide. I'm like, what leads people to suicide? Because that person is just lost a cousin. And if someone actually, let me just sort of, if someone actually commits suicide, isn't that being selfish? That's one. Um, we've got another few comments that have come on the watch party. Um, and it says sometimes when you try to show kindness, despite their bullying, they take this as weakness and cue for them to do more. And the same person said, uh, you can only kill bullying with kindness if you are not surrounded by them 24 seven. If they are too close to you, it's slightly harder. 
And I think mm-hmm. back to that um, whole thing about, um, I, yeah, I'm not going to keep saying it, but about that attachment, detachment, right? Uh, there were loads of different interesting comments. I can't, do you want to, shall we break them down and, and attempt to respond or let's do that? Let's, let's do the first one. I think this is uh, it's quite um, well, deep. Uh, so this person has lost the cousin uh, about a month ago to suicide. And he is saying that what leads people to commit suicide and by committing suicide, isn't that person selfish? Okay, so, so, the, so should we, yeah, should we break it down? So the first one, uh, so I've, I've had, um, so, so first, first of all, you know, it's, 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 it's um, definitely, I don't know who this person is, but thoughts are with this person because I've got two cousins who uh, committed uh, suicide, um, you know, in my lifetime and, and it's just, it's unthinkable, right? It's unthinkable. And the second, um, you know, the second point is, is it selfish? Is, is that right? Is that the statement? Yeah. Um, I've heard, so I've got, I've, I've got friends and family who they're split halfway down the line, right? And I've, I've had different conversations and, 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 and um, um, with different people. It's subjective, right? Some people will say it's selfish because there's children being left behind. There's a, um, they've been lived by their partner and, and their children, et cetera. But then no one truly knows, right, that, that what that person is going through because until you've actually had suicidal thoughts, right, and not everyone has, until you've actually attempted to commit suicide, again, not everyone has, right, you have absolutely no idea what that person has going through because it could be seen as a sign of weakness from somebody close and far, or it could be seen uh, for somebody who they've confided in, by the way, um, um, and usually people confide in, usually there's one person, right? There's usually there's one person who knows always a bit more about what's going on in someone's life than, than another. And that person will be like thinking, wow, there's just no way out. Like there is literally no way out. And, and I think until you've experienced it, it's really, it's really, I guess, easy to judge someone and, and put a label on someone to say is it is it weakness um, but at the same time the natural instinct would be that oh but what happened to the kids or what happened to the partners but until you've actually really experienced it seriously guys you have no clue I, I would say because I, I, I nearly commit suicide so I can speak authentically about it um, and I'm happy to share about it and I don't, I don't really care who's listening on Facebook in terms of friends and family I mean in a nice way because it's a real subject and we will need to talk about it. Yeah, no, I think, you know, after opening up um, and you know, the reason I started doing my lives um, you know, a couple of years ago was it's the same thing as what you just said, Manoj, is, you know, going through a completely um, low point at a low point and having a, such a big breakdown and not knowing who to actually reach out to. Because at that point, I don't think, you know, um, Mental health has always been around, right? Um, anxiety, depression, and so on. And the more and more that I did lives, and the more that we've connected as a as a collective, as a group, you know, you like we said last time, it's so weird. Like you, you, you went on a time bullies, did a time bullies one, and you've reflected on it, and it's something that you're taking you know, taking seriously. And the more and more I thought about that, people actually reached out, I realized. But when I was at the lowest, I actually tried to commit suicide three times. But that's because I literally could not figure out a way out for me to actually be happy. And maybe because I was expecting everyone else to actually understand and keep me happy, but that was not going to happen, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I think I said to you, Manoj, you know, like doing weddings and going through a complete breakup, that's it's hard because you're mm. going in to something that you don't agree with, right? Or at that point, of course, I mean, I can't write, right? But at that point, I was, you know, I didn't agree with it. So then having groups like this, I think, you know, you're right. But no one knows what that person's going through. And I think because that person, as the person who wants to commit suicide, because 
they've also got into their mind that, you know what, actually, even if I tell them they're not going to understand, I know that they don't understand, but if I tell them they're still not going to understand. So you know what, actually, what's the point of living? Right? Um, but yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a really interesting share that you shared because, um, um, yeah, we've, we've had long in-depth discussions about this, right? But I think, I forget the, is it the, 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 the person who put it on the WhatsApp group? Um, but I think, thank you for putting it, by the way. There's no right or wrong answer. I'm just saying, just talking from some experience. I think we all have a moral obligation um, just to be there for someone when someone reaches out. So uh, I'm, I'm going to say this, right, because it's really important, but most people don't read into this and some people do. You know when somebody posts, gives, sends you a WhatsApp message saying, hey, bro, hey, sis, how are you doing? Just trust me on this. They're not saying that just for the sake of doing that, right? It's not the same as physically, you know, when somebody says, oh, how are you doing? And then your, in, your response is, yeah, I'm, I'm good. We're at work. Do you, have a good, do you have a good day? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. And they carry on, right? When you do it in silence, when you're doing it over a WhatsApp message or a text message and you're asking the question, right? There's, there's, there's normally two definitive reasons, right? Either you're, you need something from someone, right? And, and it's, by the way, that's not a bad thing because need means it could be their time. It means that you're actually asking them how they're doing, but really, if you, if you look into it, you actually want to reach out to someone because you have no, you have no one to actually speak to. And that's mm -hmm. the person that you're thinking of at that time. So it's a natural instinct to say, oh, how are you doing, bro? How are you doing, sis? How are you doing, mate? But actually what you really want to do is you want to have a genuine conversation with, the, with them because there's something that's actually challenging you in life. And I think there's a series of accumulative moments in life that can happen, that can build up, that turn to, oh, no one's listening now, or the doors are always shut. So yeah. then I think, oh, I'm not going to stop asking now. And then that's what leads to that kind of where you think, like I, didn't, I didn't know that that person was going to commit suicide or commit, like he was so happy or she was so happy. That's why there's a shock because it's always there, but it's a micro buildup of that macro, right? But it's hard to spot. It's really hard to spot. Um, and I've got this habit where... When yeah. someone's at the point when they're about to do it, right? Is it selfish or not? How much pain must someone be in? to take that action. Because if you think of it this way, physiologically, we are wired to survive. There's a reason why our life flashes before our eyes the moment we're about to die, because our body is trying to stay alive. So to completely go against our nature takes something in itself. And if you look at the action of someone taking suicide, that's the last percentage of an entire 100% action. What happened in the 99 leading up to it that was completely missed by everyone? Nobody, so, I mean, nobody sits there and thinks that I'm going to commit suicide and it's this wonderful, beautiful thing. Let's just get it out. Let's just be yeah. real, guys, right? It's, it's, it's the last resort. It's, the, it's, it's their last resort, right? Whoever's um, gone through it, right? Um, and back to Viraj's uh, point, it's unimaginable, literally unimaginable, the pain that someone is going through for them male or female right it doesn't make a difference so i'm not talking about mine for mental but they both obviously life is a life right it's unimaginable to know what that person is going through to then even get to that stage it's crazy try talk to someone who you think that is going through it or you know has gone through it and i guarantee you you're gonna you will your mind will be boggled with um the amount of pain that that person is going through right because you will not know until someone reaches out to you H how would you know right how would you know um, if somebody's got a happy marriage, an amazing business, an amazing job, uh, you know, materially satisfied, right? Or even spiritually satisfied. I've had some deep conversations with monks, right? I mean, you know, they're not exempt, by the way, all right? Just to put it out there, a human is a human, right? Everyone goes through trauma at different levels. You just life can unravel your life in, in just like that right you, it, life can take some something away from you whether that's your job or your business the roof over your head um a loved one and you just don't know how you would process it right or or, or a loss of a child like um i've talked to quite a few um women who have you know um, um just lost um through um 
um, you know, um, failed pregnancies, et cetera, and childbirth. It, it, it's, it's, you just don't know, right? Someone's pain and your pain is... There's no comparison. Really. It's, there's no comparison. Until you've, I guess the point we're trying to make, guys, is that unless you've lived it and you've experienced it, yeah, um, you can't judge. You can't judge. Yeah, it's, 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 you just can't. Yeah, I agree. You, can have an opinion, you can have an opinion and think, but you just, you just can't judge because to, to judge someone, you would have to live in their shoes. Does that make sense in that experience? There's a great point here from Mansatra in the chat. It may be that them thinking that, that them not being there is the best thing for other people. So they could be seen as a selfless act in their view. Like, yeah, I, I can probably... And that's usually derived from shame. Yeah. I might, other people are better off if I'm not here, which is, yeah. How, yeah. How, how has someone got to that point where their own existence mm. has led them to believe that people around them are better off if they're not there, right? I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, you know, touch wood, I, I never got to a place where I got that low, but I did have some very existential questions of myself a few years ago where, I, again, to your point, then, I felt I had everything that I should have, but something was missing. And I didn't know what it was. And it's funny because I think back now, now that you mention it, we're talking about, because I was going for some CBT and counseling. They kept asking me, are you having these thoughts? Are you having these thoughts? I'm like, why would I be having these thoughts? And just by them asking me that, I started, have, I started thinking about, well, should I be having these thoughts? Like what, you know, it's weird. Because then you, you and that, this is where the mind can begin to play tricks with you, is that you start to really question everything. And, and I'm really, really grateful that when I sort of hit my rock bottom moment, it wasn't that low, but I was able to catch myself saying, okay, the way I'm going right now, it's not good. And I need to radically do something different that's going to alter the trajectory of the direction that it seems like the experts think I may be heading towards. And if they're not going to help me, then I need to start to help myself and had to start changing, again, my environment and, and a few other things, turn off a few lights. And you know what, ultimately, and for me, at, you, you're right. It, it, it was that. I, ultimately, I had to pick myself up, right? And for me personally, it was spirituality that 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 was the the catalyst of change. Um, and 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 it's going to be different for different people. Uh, sorry, Saga, you were going to say something? Yeah, man. So uh, messages are very much can see the live video comments, which I think um, we should definitely go through. Um, I've just got some on the watch party again. Um, Suicide does not make someone selfish, it's bad. Uh, and as we said, imagine their mindset and what they are going through. Uh, they are in pain, and it sometimes uh, is also them asking for help, which is what um, you know, you picked on. Um, live video ones, we've got, um, uh, well, yeah. I mean, do you want to go to the live video? Uh, yeah. one? We've got a message here from, um, we just had Mansata's comment there. Uh, Rina's commented about social media, fear of media, bullying, especially the younger generation. How do you teach them the fine line in ways of handling to cope with it and importantly not to tolerate it? Tough one for sure. Um, and then from Borga, you're born with free choice. If someone gets lost in feelings and need for confirmation, they see it as the only way to end this present if there's free choice. How, how we, who we are left is to feel how we perceive is not their way of perceiving it. So I think that's to that point is I suppose ultimately as Manoj and I we sort of throw this around life is a dance between destiny and free will and the and I suppose the act of suicide is free will yeah. because someone's consciously chosen to do it. It's, but then it's I also think the, the reaction that other people have is almost to a certain extent of like okay how has this happened on our watch and and I suppose the real elephant in the room is people at the moment, generally speaking, don't want to deal with it. But that's also before the fact and after the fact, because someone's literally got into that point to the point that you were saying earlier about people need checking in and what is the environment like around them and are they getting when they are reaching out, trust, all that kind of stuff. So I think it's a much more broader conversation in terms of, as we sort of wrap up, who can we collectively be for other people and begin to cultivate that environment because we talk about being the change. Yes, there are certain things that we can do for ourselves, of course, but then also what is the environment? Who are we being in the space that we're in right now? There's going to sort of cause that ripple effect where people do feel more comfortable to, to reach out, to open out, where bullying and gossip isn't as tolerated online or offline as it should be. 
as it shouldn't be rather like where does that change begin to start yeah i agree i agree and i think this is um as i mentioned earlier i think you know mind um mental health depression anxiety has always been around and people have just taken a back to it and just actually you know turned a blind eye to it and it's so nice now that there's so much uh that comes out um you know Rimmel, who's on live on our um today thank you Rimmel, for joining um she owns uh she created a group called asian patient which is also on uh, on facebook um and i think i'm going to reach out to both of you and i reached out to Rhea yesterday but um, hopefully we will do a live with in a couple of weeks um, on the Asian patient platform as well as Facebook Live because I think we, again, because we don't see it, how, like, you know, the amount, we had so many people on Zoom today. Now, we don't know what they're going through, right? Because we don't want to judge. However, if someone in that group was thinking that, okay, actually it's time to end my life, Hopefully, the conversations that we had right, must have helped them to see, or you know, whoever to see that actually, maybe it's not the right thing to do. But I think it's just that reaching out moment, and I think this is why having a platform like ourselves and other people who've got those you know, mental health platforms, um, and whether it's Facebook, we are not realizing how many people we're actually helping, um, and so many people have commented on our YouTube channel and so on. And, so clearly, people are finding some kind of you know, peace with um, whatever we're doing and what other others are doing. But as you said, Manoj, earlier, it's when someone's actually reaching out to you, just think that actually, is that person just saying hello? Or does that person actually want to say something at all? You know, don't just say, yes, that's it for me. Um, yep, definitely, definitely. I think, um, yeah, look, I think we can talk for hours on this subject and it's such an important subject and we we, we acknowledged them um, didn't we that one of the other guys mentioned that can we do another topic about um there were two right there were two spin-offs from this topic um, um one was about um talking about bullying the suicide and then the death and what happens after that they're gone like do you like that's a whole nother conversation i won't go into that now um and 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 there was another topic about, I can't remember, what was the other topic, Raj? I don't know, I can't remember. Um, on. It was in one of the chats, anyway. But, but, but the, the whole point is that there's so much substance to this conversation that we can just carry on talk about it. And I think at the minimum, all we just humbly try to do is raise awareness, provide potential options based on personal experiences um, that some of us have gone through not saying that they're right or wrong but just more um, options back to saga's point so then if that person he or she is thinking or contemplating about suicide if anybody is watching this or on the replay and is in a really really dark place that there's always options out there and your circle of influence meaning the person who you think that you can reach out to actually might not be in that might be outside of that right and 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 quite seldomly in life, it's not the person who's closest to you that you can actually just have a deep, meaningful conversation with. It's it's somebody who's a random stranger that then suddenly becomes a really great friend, right, in your life because they've got no bias or judgment to knowing you and how you grew up together. Does it make sense? So, and then the other side of it is that um, if anyone's listening, um, is that people are reaching out to you. Um, I, I'm not, don't, please don't get paranoid if everyone starts reaching out to you in WhatsApp, I don't mean that, but just have a bit more of awareness of the way someone reaches out to you, why they're reaching out to you potentially, and what you can do to just morally and, and just from a humane perspective, what you can do just to be there for that person, right? Um, and you don't have to be an expert or psychologist or, 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 or et cetera. You could just be not even talking. Um, you could just be listening, just listening, just, just your presence in that, in their energy is going to make them feel that somebody actually cares. Somebody's there for me. Somebody values my life. Somebody values who I am. Somebody recognizes um, uh, and understands that I am also here because, because it's, it's such a deep subject that, that sometimes people commit suicide based on non-existence, right? They think no one is aware of them even being alive, right? 
which is uh, I mean that's just another another subject so I guess there's many things we can talk about but I think I think um, um, definitely we will answer all the comments um, yeah. like we always do Mansata's comment hits the nail on the head it's about raising awareness some people make fun just for fun not realizing the impact they have on our education is important yeah exactly Perfect. exactly exactly and I think that's I think actually that nicely sums up doesn't it that nicely sums up. so thanks thanks um, to everyone I can't see the people on the chat so apologies or Sagra's watch party or whatsapp groups but um, thanks to every single person who's contributed um, as always, it's, it's a heartfelt contribution from all of us. Um, um, uh, Havan uh, was, he's part of Mindful Men's Club, so he couldn't join us, but he, for everyone, from the women, uh, uh, um, uh, men to wealth and reroute, uh, please check out their groups. We would not be here without them. So massive shout out to all the women who are doing exactly the same thing we're doing um, for, you know, reroute is from um, 18 to 35. For those of you guys who don't know, and the mental wealth is for the women's only, um, like Mindful Men's Club is for um, men only. Um, nothing to do with being sexist, guys. Um, it's just to do with having um, conversations that are more sometimes sensitive, let's just say is the right word, right, um, amongst um, the respective sexes. Um, but I think, look, keep sharing it, keep, 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 keep commenting, keep suggesting topics, um, because there is literally no topic that we will not talk about we've talked about celibacy amongst men we've talked about time bullies we've talked about uh, money mindset introduction to spirituality you name it there's i think there's 21 events right now if you look on event right that we've, we've covered and we're going to keep going um as long as we're all here we're going to keep going forever and ever and ever because we're just trying to break the stigma of mental health amongst men why because life is too precious and we don't want another male to become a statistic to suicide so that's kind of our mission and why we do things um but listen life is not always doom and gloom um the weekend is amongst us and lockdown or no lockdown you've got so many things you can do so go out for a walk i'm gonna go for a meal and go to my favorite park and go for a walk because i've been slacking on the exercise front um so um, yeah do, do something productive <laughs> Yeah, I got whooped. I got whooped um, um, by my 16-year-old son. I'll happily, um, and I, I, I reckon I'm pretty decent, right? At Scrabble, and maybe that's my ego kicking in. Yeah, it is my ego kicking in. And he humbled me because he's beating me 11-7. So that's what I'm going to really enjoy doing. So whatever you guys are doing, have a blessed weekend. Um, lots of love for all of those who support us um, in the front and behind the scenes. And yeah, just keep it real. And if you can be there, be there for someone. Thank yeah. you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank yeah. you, everyone.